morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another Easter sunrise or Easter service here at the Eucharist Missionary Baptist Church. Brother Reverend Jeffrey K. Francis is our pastor. We'd like to start out with a song on this morning. There's a lily in the valley and it's bright as the morning star.
present age, my calling to fulfill. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you for another chance to see a brand new day. Mm -hmm. Thank you for another chance, O oh Father, to get it right. Yes. Thank you for another chance, dear Father, to open my eyes and to see your creation. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing the blood to run warm through my veins. Mm -hmm. Oh God, it was nobody but you. Nobody. It was nobody but you that brought me from yesterday to today. It was nobody but you, oh God, that brought me from week to week. It was nobody but you, oh God, that brought me into the year 2024. And oh Father, we just want to say thank you right now. We come to you today, dear Father, with heavy hearts, dear Father. We have not done everything that you wanted us to do. Dear Father, we sinned in your sight. And we just ask right now that you would just forgive us for all sins and iniquities. Yeah. Dear Father, we pray right now that you would just continue to make us clean as the driven snow. We come to you, dear Father, humbly as we can, humbly as we know how, dear Father, from a from a creature to his creator. Mm -hmm. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for being a forgiving God. Yes. Thank you right now, dear Father, for being the God of a second chance. Yes. Dear Father, we know that we didn't deserve it, but it was your grace and your, your mercy yes. that allowed our days to roll on just a little while longer. Yes. Dear Father, as we gather here today on this Sunday morning, Mm -hmm. This Easter Sunday morning, dear Father, on the day of March 31st, 2024, uh -huh. oh God, we just want to say thank you. Thank, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Dear Father, as we come here on this Sunday morning to worship your name, we do not want to be remiss as to thank the one who died on the cross for our mm -hmm. sins. Yes, sir. But then on that third day, he mm -hmm. arose. Yeah. He arose with all power all in right. his hands. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, he defeated oh, death. Yes. And because of that, dear Father, we know right now that we live. Yes. And we can live, dear Father, with freedom in our hearts. Yes. Knowing right now, dear Father, that we are eternally in great devote to you, dear Father, for everything that your son Jesus Christ did on this earth. Thank you, O oh Father, for the sacrifice that he made for us. Yes. Even though he knew us not, thank you, O oh God. Thank you. And because of that, dear Father, you have opened up the door so that we can have a relationship with him. Knowing right now, dear Father, that we can live the way that you want us to live. That we can walk the way that you want us to walk. Yes, 
But yet and still, the Father, we can know right now that your word reigns true and reigns forever. Yes. Thank you, O oh Father. Thank you. The Father, we know for some of us it might be about the clothes, it might be about the candy, it might be about the eggs. Mm -hmm. But right now, dear Father, we know it's about your son, Jesus yes. Christ, yes. and how he yes. has dominion yes. over this world. Yes. We're grateful to you, O oh day, dear Father. Yes. Grateful to you right now, dear yes. Father, because yes. of your son, Jesus Christ. And if we don't believe in your son, Jesus Christ, oh, where, oh, where will we where? be right now? Mm -hmm. yes. Dear Father, we ask that you will just continue to sanctify this service on this yes. Sunday morning. Yes. Anoint our pastor afresh, dear Father. Yes. Give him all that he needs, dear Father, to bring the word to you right yes. now and to bring the word to your people. Yes. Thank you, O God, for allowing him, dear Father, to labor in your word all week long. Yes. And we pray right now that you will just continue to hold him up on each and every leaning side. Give him strength. Give him power. Give him simplicity. We pray for our sick and our shut in, dear yes. Father. We may not know them all name by name or situation by situation. But what we do know is that you are a healing God. You are a God that's in control of the doctors. You are a God that's in control of the hospitals. We know right now that you are a God who is able to do exceedingly yes. and abundantly. Yes. We praise your name today, O oh Father. Yes. So we ask that you would just touch those yes. who need you right now, dear Father, more than they ever have before. Yes. Yes. We pray for the bereaved family right yes. now, dear Father. They may be suffering right now from the loss of a loved one. Yes. But we know right now, dear Father, that you are God of peace. We know, O oh God, that you are God of joy. Yeah. That you can restore us, dear Father, to where you would want us to be. And we will sing your praises forever yeah. and ever yeah. and ever. Oh God, we ask that you would just allow us to worship you in spirit and in truth on today. And we will be careful to give you all the praise. Yeah. Give you all the glory yeah. and all the honor. Yeah. We pray this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Our returning, reigning, and redeeming Savior. Yes. And the church said amen, 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 amen. and amen. 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 We thank you for your participation in our devotion and prayer service on this morning. We return the main part of our service over to the pulpit and the choir. Amen. amen. Amen, amen, amen. As everyone continue to come in. I mean, y'all is happy to be alive on this reservation. Oh, okay, well, that may work for Jaguars. <laughs> or one of these, that may work for them, for y'all Jaguars. But for Jesus, I'm going to try that one more time. How many of y'all are happy to be Alive. Resurrection. Sunday. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. So um, I'm going to be quick because I got to get these babies up here to the Easter speech. But a couple of quick announcements um, as we go through the uh, service. Um, how many visitors? Just, I, I'm, I'm not one of those that make you stand up and make you talk about all that. But if you're visiting with us on today, just wave it. Wave it. Wave it. Amen. 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 Today, we're going to show them some love. And um, if you're visiting with us, if you need anything, make sure you just holler at one of our ushers or even holler at yourself. I'd be more than happy to help and to assist with you with whatever you need because we want you to experience this worship experience. Amen? Amen. Now, um, we do have those that are sick among us and uh, family. Make sure that we are praying for them. Um, those that have lost loved ones, let's make sure that we are lifting them up as well. This Wednesday, there will be Bible study at 6.30, so I need y'all to come back out, come back out this Wednesday at 6.30. Now, I need to do a big thank you. A big thank you is in order for last Friday. Last Friday just passed. We had Good Friday service with 
um, two good friends of mine over at New Colossus. And guess what, y'all? The Ushers was there, the Greeners was there. Praise the Lord, y'all. The Praise Saints was there, the Deacons was there, the Deaconess was there, and then a bunch of y'all was there. Y'all, we Amen. packed the place out, and Amen. some said we had a wonderful time Amen. in the Lord. Amen. Amen. It was an awesome, awesome service, and I thank each and every one of you, in whatever part you played, the musicians, I saw the C Ray, um, the musicians, everybody, any part that you played, thank you, sir, thank you, ma'am. For making that an awesome, awesome worship experience. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, for those that are visiting with us, we're getting ready to do all. Those that are members here, get ready to pay your time, get ready to pay your all. This will be our one time that we give as it pertains to monetary the back unto the Lord. It is right to give. You may hear other things about giving, but it is right. If God has blessed you, the right thing to do is to bless him back. Members, believers of Christ, 10% is belong to them. But then if you have not been blessed with much in your offering, you look. But if you have been blessed with much, guess what? Give a good offer. But this is what I always say. God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Always be happy about what you are getting. So, as you get ready to come, y'all can start coming. Oh, so y'all can give us salvation. But this is what's going to happen. Y'all go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to go ahead and give. Well, oh, which cat after we give, we're going to go ahead and do our Easter speeches. And then after that, the choir going to come and sing. I'm going to say a few words. And then we're going to head toward the house.
Morning Church. Good morning. Happy um, Reservation Day. How y'all doing? Y'all doing? Y'all doing? Y'all doing? Y'all doing? Y'all doing?
I know he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I give his voice of cheer, and when I need him, he is always there. Jamarion. God said, God said, hold on. God sent his son to take the punishment for all the thoughtless, thoughtless, sinful things we do. Jesus gave his life because he loved them. His love is boundless, sweet, forever true. On Easter morning, he showed his Savior, his resurrection, provide, I mean, proves. He is our Lord. This is why we tell you Happy Easter.
Who will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, What of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water, washed his hands, before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children. Verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. You may be seen. Here for just for a few moments, I promise not to hold you long for you. But just for a few moments, let's talk about trial number six. That's what you may be seeing. Trial number six. Let's walk on this presentation. When we come to the point of our text, Matthew 27, verse 15. Jesus has now endured not one trial, not two, three, or four, but Jesus has gone through five trials. Now, the first one that he had was an illegal trial. Because it was held in the house of a ex high priest by the name of Ananias. Trials were to be held during the day, but he decided to have this trial at night. So they started out treat my Lord and your Savior wrong. Trial number two, they would leave from Ananias' house, but then go to his son-in-law house. See, is. Now, this would be a legal trial, trial number two, because he was the high priest, and they held this one before Don. So it was legal, but guess what? In this trial, they tried to convict him of crimes that he did not commit. And they also, they wanted to kill Jesus. But guess what? They did not have the authority to do it. So they still had a problem. We have this problem named Jesus. We're trying to get rid of him. And we can't do it in the first trial. Can't do it in the second. So let's go ahead and have number three. Number three, these same high priests got chief priests, got elders. And then they got scribes. They, they gathered together to have a, another trial. Brought in more witnesses, more trumped up charges, and tried to try him once again for crimes that he did not commit. But just like the first two, in this third trial, they were unable to do the most important thing that they wanted to do. They found him guilty of all their charges, but they could not kill Jesus. So since they have somewhat not figured this out, Everything that we're doing to try to kill Jesus is not working. So let us do this. Let us take Jesus, fourth trial, to the governor of this particular region, Jerusalem. There's a governor by the name of Pilate. Pilate does not like Jews. And if we take him 
to Jesus. They would take Jesus to Pilate. We know that Pilate is going to agree with us, and this is one, one thing. Pilate was a Roman, and he had the authority and power to kill Jesus. So they escort Jesus from the mob squad, the scribes, the Pharisees and high priests, and take him to Pilate. They give their evidence of why Jesus should be killed, but then but notice what happened. After Pilate listened to all the witness testimony, after Pilate reviewed all of the evidence, this is the statement that Pilate came up with. I find no fault in this just man. Did y'all catch what I just said? Pilate was a Roman. And these, when we're talking about Jesus the Christ, they're giving him all the evidence in order to convict him and get him killed, murdered. But after looking at everything, a pagan governor by the name of Pilate, looking at Jesus standing before him, and he says this, I find no fault in this man. This is trial number four, right? So since he finds no fault in this man, the right thing would be to release him and let him go. If you convict me of crimes and you can't find anything to convict me for, apparently I'm innocent. And if I'm innocent, I shouldn't be released. So somebody please tell me, why is there a trial number five and trial number six? If he found him innocent, why does Pilate not release him? But can I tell you what Pilate did? Pilate passed the book. Pilate did not take on the responsibility of what was given before him. Pilate, you have the authority. Pilate, you have the power. But guess what? When you want to please people and not use your position properly, you'll begin to make bad decisions. Because watch what he did. Pilate says, I'm not going to put this all on me. Jesus is not even from here. We're going to send Jesus back to where he came from. There's a, another governor in the town of Galilee by the name of Herod. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to send him back to Herod and let Herod go ahead and decide the case. Mm -hmm. Jesus get before Herod. And then guess what? Herod did not take Jesus seriously. When Jesus showed up, only thing Herod wanted Jesus to do was do a miracle here. Turn some water into wine. Jesus, I, I, I want to see a miracle. Make someone that's blind see. Jesus, give me a good miracle. I dare somebody lay, make them walk. Pilate, I mean Herod, was not serious about who Jesus was. So guess what he did? While Jesus is standing there in front of him, and Herod is making all these accusations. Herod wanted him to do all these things. Guess what Jesus did? He did not open his mouth. Amen. Accusation after accusation came toward Jesus, which was not true. But guess what? Jesus did not open his mouth. That should be, that should be a good word for somebody listening to me today. Just because folks say stuff about you and it's not right, don't mean that you have to open up your mouth and go ahead and bust and fight with it. If it is not true, why do you have to say something? Because most of the time, when you open your mouth and say something about what they're saying, you're going to validate what they're saying. Somebody told me this a long time ago, and it's, 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 it's good teaching. A lot of people don't know that you are a until you open your mouth. But let me keep moving. He's there before Herod. Herod could not get Jesus to entertain him. So guess what Herod does? Herod entertains himself with Jesus. He mocks him. He puts a robe on. He put a, a stick in his hand as if it was a... But then before he sent him back to Pilate, 
he made it. Now, I forgot to tell you that with each trial, at the end of it, it would be some good. It would be some whips on Jesus' back, punches to Jesus' face. And then that would be even do something that was so disrespectful, y'all. They would spit on. All this took place. Try one, two, three, four, and five. Then we back in 27, verse number 50. Remember this. Before Pilate sent Jesus to heaven, he knew he was in us. So now he showed back up to him. I know he had to be wondering, why is Jesus back? Because I thought Herod would have taken care of this. But said, guess what? Since Herod don't want to do it, and I know that Jesus is innocent, let me try and fix this problem. Well, get verse number 15. It says that at the feast of the governor, there was this thing in which the governor could do. The governor, he had prisoners. And at the feast of the governor, one time a year, he would release unto the people one of the prisoners. So now you got Jesus that, are, that is a prison. But then he says, you know what? I'm not just going to allow you to release Jesus, but I'm going to give you a choice. So who's the choice? You got Jesus on one side. You do know Jesus, right? The way man. Jesus on one side. The burden bearer. Jesus is on this side. The will in the middle of the will. Jesus on this side. When they was hungry, he was food. Jesus on this side. When they was thirsty, he gave them water. Jesus on this side. The lane that needed to walk, he was their feet. Jesus on this side. Those that could not see, he was their eyes on. Jesus on this side. You know he was on this side. Though. But then they had somebody on this side. Your Bible says that it was this Malthusian by the name of Barabbas. Now if you say in Matthew, it does not tell you how or what he did in order for him to get in prison. But hold on, if you go to Mark 15, it'll tell you that he was a notorious hmm, criminal. That notorious means that he was known throughout that region of doing some things. He was what they call an insurrectionist, which means he revolted against the Roman government. He tried to overthrow them. But watch this. In the process of doing that, he killed some people along the way. So on this side you have Jesus. But on this side you have a person that's committed treason. But then also murder. Hmm. Y'all I I'm looking at the choices. So now that you have both of them before you, this is Pilate's question. Drop down around verse 17. He says to this crowd that's gathered, this crowd of people, he says, who do you want me to release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus? just did again. He has now removed the fate of Jesus out of his hands and put it in the hands of the crowd.
is because the scribes, the Pharisees, all the religious leaders, they were envious of Jesus. Okay, let me give you a better word for that word, envious. Go back and look at it in its original language. A better word is they were jealous of Jesus. I hear your question. Boy, that's well, why were they jealous of Jesus? Well, you remember, it was a corral that had death. But just like that, whenever Jesus was out somewhere teaching, y'all remember the time when he was out in the field? He started out teaching with just a few. But before sun set, guess what? He had to make fish sandwiches. Not for just a few, not for many, but over 2,000. He had to make sandwiches for it. Because guess what? Whenever people heard that Jesus was somewhere, people would just show up. But it wasn't it was deeper than that, y'all. These people that began to follow Jesus, they believed that Jesus was the Messiah. They believed that Jesus was the one that God sent. And guess what? These religious, these religious leaders, they had a problem with all the people beginning to follow, follow Jesus. But watch this. This may bless you. These jealous enemies of Jesus, whenever they decided that they could not stop Jesus, they decided to destroy Jesus. I tried it again. They are jealous and envious of Jesus. And they see the movement. They see the people following. They see the people calling the sign. They see now that, hold on, we got a problem. We cannot stop this. Jesus. And since we can't stop him and we're not going to join, the next thing jealous people will do will try and destroy you. See, you, you missed what I just tried to give you. There are some people that's in this house today. Your name not Jesus, but you got some men in this, that's in your house, out your house, some people that don't like you. You have not done anything to them. They simply just don't like you. Watch this. And they are jealous and envious of you. And see, so you thought it was all about the stuff that you had that caused them to be jealous. You thought it was all about who you were that caused them to be envious. But can I drop something on you? Here it is. The reason that they are jealous and envious, envious of you is because they realize this. Watch this. I can't stop you. So the next best thing for me to do is try to destroy you. So you was wondering, why in the world do these people keep running my name through the mud? Why do they keep talking about me, texting about me? You know what? They're jealous. And they realize I can't stop you. So guess what? Next thing, best thing, let me try and destroy you. But do you see them now? I'm about done. I'm about to get you to your chicken greens and whatever else you got to Do you see it now? Potter has given them the choice. So as they are marinating on what they need to do, Potter, he takes him a seat. He sits on the throne of the throne. But while Pilate is now sitting there, a messenger comes up to him. He has a message. And this message, baby, isn't this? Is from his wife. Pilate gets a message from his wife. And this is what she tells him. Have nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things to him. Okay, that's that's King James. Baby, let Jesus alone. Let him go. He ain't done nothing to nobody. Get your hands off, buddy. Leave him alone. Because God has shown it to me in a dream that you shouldn't put your hands on him. Leave him alone. Now that's the warning. Do you hear? That's a warning that she's telling her husband. You got a right and a wrong. I'm trying to push you in the direction of doing what is right. A warning. But hold on. Can 
I had to help some of y'all out. If Pilate will not listen and look at all the rest of the warnings that God has sent him, what makes you think he's going to listen to the one coming from his wife? Because what do you mean? Whenever he had his fourth trial, when did Pilate come out of the fourth trial that he had with him? The first time he saw Jesus. The first time he saw him, he came out of him and said, this is a just man. I find no fault in you. That's your first one. You're dealing with somebody based upon your own evidence, Janice, that he's innocent. Leave him alone. But guess what? He didn't listen to that. To that warning. After that warning, guess what? He would then go send him to Herod. Bring him back. And guess what? Herod was worse than Pilate. If Herod didn't kill him when he was there, and he showed back up at Jojo's cell, that minister tell you, leave this man alone. But guess what? He would not listen to the warnings that God was showing him. And then you have your wife. The one that you have been bonded with. Tell you, leave the man alone. That's one and number three. But guess what, y'all? Pilate ain't the only one that God trying to show stuff to. Uh, it's going to get quiet for me. But Pilate ain't the only one that God began to try and show stuff to. And God showed it to you the first time. I'm trying to get y'all off the pilot just for a minute. God showed it to you the first time. And tell you, pack up all, leave it alone, or get out of it. But guess what? God ain't talking to me. That's not me. So we keep on. And then we go to the next situation. We get in without God. And then guess what? God gives you another one. Now you don't got an attitude upside your head. But then guess what? We don't want to listen. Or we don't want to see the warning that God has told us. And then this is what we do. We'll holler, why is this stuff happening to me? I'm just trying to do right and live my life, and this stuff just keeps happening to me. Well, what about warning one and two, which God shows you? But then here comes warning number three. God, God, God says, I'm going to show you and tell you one and two. But I'm going to put number three where it begins to physically affect you. I told you to leave it alone. Now your health is going back. But guess what? That that devil is just always on my back. He's always on my track. That won't never let me, won't never let me do right. Hold on. That's not how that works. But then, can I tell you something about warnings and when you don't want to see what God is trying to show you? There are consequences for not keeping to the warning. You want me to show you real quick? Keep driving up to a red light. And keep going through that red light with it being yellow. When you go through the red light on yellow, the yellow is a warning. Yeah, slow down. You went through it the first time. When the car come. Went through it the second time you, you made it through. That and fourth time, and guess what? But well, what about that sixth time? <coughs> when that car oh, hits you in the side of your door. What about Jacob? I'm done. Watch this. Pilate is now. Let's come back to the people. Now the question is asked again. Who do you want? Who do you want me to release to you? Did you see him drop down to verse number 21? I'm done. Watch this. Pilate has now given him the choice. Do you want Jesus? Or do you want Arouse. Now listen to what the people yell out. We won't. Barabbas. Y'all, I didn't understand. The people, he's giving them a choice between Jesus and Barabbas. And they yell out, give us Barabbas. I didn't understand that one, but then again, I stayed there a little while longer, then it taught me a real 
real valuable life lesson. Can I tell you the valuable life lesson that it taught me? This is what it taught me. The people that were hollering Barabbas did was the same people. You back up a few days earlier when Jesus was on that donkey riding into Jerusalem. These are the same people that got palm branches in their hands. They're hollering Hosanna to the highest. These are the same people that was worshiping and praising Jesus. The same people one day is worshiping him. But the next day is hollering Barabbas. What, 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 what did they teach me? The same folk that's not on your face. The same folk that you call buddy. If you give them enough time, instead of them smiling in your face, they just may be stabbing you in the back. That's what, that's what happened to Jesus, y'all, but they howl. Give me Barabbas. Y'all, I was still confused because, okay, Pilate is telling that to Jesus too. He says, okay, well, you want Barabbas, but what have Jesus done? Give me his talk. Tell me what is it that he has done since you want Barabbas. Guess what? Yeah, that's how it was. Back then, you see how it was real solid? Didn't nobody have nothing to say? They could not give him a charge of what Jesus had done. So watch this. This is what he do. Since you can't give us no charge, then well, what you want me to do with it? He's in, so what you want me to do with it? This is what they say. Crucified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you hear what I'm saying? They said, these are the Jews, these are the Christ. They said, Jesus, you ain't got nothing wrong. So what do we, what are we going to do with Jesus? Hmm. You've already said you're going to agree with what's wrong and take him Barabbas. But now the question is asked, what do we do with Jesus? There's nothing go wrong. And notice this. They say crucify. See, that don't sit too well with you because you need to understand this. Jews did not kill their prisoners by way of crucifixion. This was a Roman way in which they killed people. Crucifixion was a way that the Romans tortured their prisoners before they killed them. What did Jesus do to deserve crucifixion? What did he do? They didn't have no charge. But what did he do in order that the people that he had some points fed, the people in which he had healed, the same people would get to a point that they would turn their back on him. Like that. Do you, do you catch the same? How many times did Jesus stand up for them and now they was given a choice to stand up for Jesus, but everybody turned. Yes. Turn it back on me. Can I ask you a question? How many times have Jesus stood up for you? Charles, how many times has he made ways out of no way? But now it's time for you to stand up for Jesus. But you turn your back. But now, the one that's in power, y'all will listen to me carefully. Pastor, this ain't the Eastern Middle so there you be all right. The one that's in power, power, notice 
what he did. After they decided to not listen and not touch Jesus, Pilate, remember, knew he was in us. So this is what Pilate says. Drop down, I think it's around verse 23 or 24, somewhere around there. Pilate says, what I'm going to do is wash my hands of this innocent man. I'm going to get the blood of Jesus off my hand. It does not only the kill y'all wanted that. Don't put this on me. This is on y'all. But hold on, Pilate. You can't wash Jesus' blood off your hand. You know why, Pilate? Pilate, you had the authority to release Jesus, but you didn't. so that his back would be fully exposed. Then his Roman soldiers would go take a will that on the end of it was a ball. Well then this ball had stones and bones and metal. So as it hits the back of his 
Some hit his butt. Some hit his body. But with every swing of his whip, pull out chunks of meat. Come out. Now, it ain't normal scourges. What was they getting ready to do? Crucify them. They were going to die anyway. But most people did not make it to the cross. Can I tell you why? Because they would lose so much blood in the scourges that they couldn't even make it to the cross. All right. Jesus took his story to say. Yeah.
But what Jesus put together. What he fits. I don't care how many enemies come and try to destroy it. They cannot break what he has joined back to. Yeah. And I'm talking about somebody like that's broken and all in so many pieces. The door of the church is so open. You come by letter Christian experience, can live in baptism today. Can be your day where you choose. You choose Jesus. Make your choice. Because for those that decide not to choose him, there will be consequences. You remember I told you that the, the Jews, they said, you know what? Let his blood be on, be on us, be on our generation. When you go back and look at history, Jerusalem was utterly destroyed. The Babylonians did not leave one brick unturned. They burned it up and they killed all the people that was in within, except for small remnants. Pastor, why do you tell us that? There are consequences when you don't make the right choice. And guess what? This is one thing I realize about consequences. They may not show up on Monday. They may not show up on Wednesday. They may not even show up in April. But guess what? Consequences for bad choices one day will show up. Ask the person that's been smoking for years. The door is open. Will that be one? Now is a good time. Guess what? I ain't going to hold you up in no 10 minutes waiting on somebody to come. If you feel the unction of being moved this way, come on. Amen. See that? Y'all may be seen. We are now getting prepared, ready to leave. I would like to thank all the guests that came out on this Resurrection Sunday. It's my prayer that something has been said that will resonate on your part. Amen. But just like this young lady, I don't know why she come down, but I'm about to find out. But just like her, while we're still here, it's the right time. Well, Pastor, you know what? You you closing us out. Why are you still here? It is the right time. Don't miss this. Opportunity. Because someone said, you know what? I, I don't really know what I should do. Watch this. The devil is not going to push you to do what's right. He's the one that gets you in a whole bunch of the mess that you're in right now. So if you feel the unction to come this way,